um, I first uh, uh, went to Siberia to Hakasia for archaeological uh, dig in 1986. We were digging sky then um, um, stunning stones and gorgons, uh, which are big uh, burial mounds. And uh, there I had a, a very strong uh, experience in contact with local uh, gods and spirits. So when I came back to St. Petersburg, involved um, with local magicians, healers, etc., and also made Buryat and shamans. Uh, and in 1990, I went to Buryat, which is the uh, Mongol region in Russia, mo modern Russia, uh, centered there around uh, Lake Baikal. Um, <clears throat> where main uh, religions practice today are uh, Tibetan kind of Buddhism uh, of uh, Yelupa school and the uh, ancient tradition uh, of uh, Siberian shamans, which is called uh, Bolo Murgel. So um, there, there I met um, um, tantric practitioners and, uh, and shamans in that trip. And uh, um, then uh, uh, in 1992, I met my main uh, Buddhist teacher, Nakanobu Rinpoche. I traveled with him all over the, um, then uh, just dissolved Soviet Union, a uh, series of retreats culminating also in the Lake Baikal, um, where uh, local um, tanka painters, tankas are the icons, uh, Buddhist icons, uh, um, local tanka painter and practitioner of uh, uh, Yamataka Tantra, he, uh, who invited Nankanobu to give the teachings there, he introduced me to. Uh, Bo and Utagan. Bo are uh, uh, male practitioners of Borogel and Utagan are female, female practitioners. That's, the, that's what we call So uh, we quickly became friends and I was translating for them uh, between them and Nankanova uh, Rinpoche. He was asking many questions because he was also an um, important scholar of uh, uh, Tibetan uh, tradition and he was doing some research uh, on this subject. In 1993, um, my wife Carol and I went again to Buryatia and we visited the uh, western region uh, called Tunka, uh, where uh, the particular uh, practices of Bua uh, Morgel uh, connected with the uh, western uh, white Tengri sky gods uh, are practiced. And in 1994, uh, we did another trip. We uh, went to Mongolia. When I'm kind of over, she was giving uh, tantric initiations, uh, then to um, Buryatia, and uh, there I met even stronger contact with uh, Buryatian shamans, and it, they invited me uh, to travel with them um, to do series of rituals uh, around Lake Baikal. Because that time there was um, perestroika was happening in Soviet Union, and there was a policy of religious uh, lib liberalization. Before that, religion was suppressed, all, all kinds of religion. Uh, including uh, Bo Morgel. And so um, important practices and uh, rituals had not been done uh, in holy places for about 70 years or so. <clears throat> so I went with them there and uh, um, we had many, many experiences. I learned many things of them. I was offered uh, also in, in initiation to become a Bo. They, they recognized me as a Bo. But uh, since I've been already Buddhist by then, uh, I didn't take initiation because it uh, uh, requires animal sacrifices, so, which is against the uh, teachings of the Buddha. Anyway, um, I learned a lot of them, uh, uh, of uh, uh, methods and teachings, observed many rituals. In 1995, uh, I met my uh, main Bombo teacher, Yung Zin Laponte Zin Amdak Rinpoche, and since then, I've uh, been following him uh, up until now. He's uh, 98 now. Uh, so um, my, uh, my wife Carol and I made a lot of uh, uh, transcripts of Bombo uh, uh, teachings, uh, uh, which are restricted to the Bombo community, but uh, because they require special spiritual transmissions. But uh, we also published uh, many public books. Uh, uh, and uh, um, I also learned a lot of, um, gained a lot of information from using the chair regarding the various levels of the competitions, particularly um, uh, Bone of Course. So now um, I have to explain what it is. Um, uh, burn as a word has um, many different meanings, uh, which may include nature of existence, for example, phenomena. But in um, 
when we talk about religion, uh, it actually has a meaning of religion, gen general meaning of uh, religion, and it's quite comparable to the word uh, Dharma. Like we know in uh, uh, Indian traditions, we have Buddha Dharma, which is Buddhist teachings, Jain Dharma, Shaiva Dharma, Vaishnava Dharma, and uh, uh, these traditions are quite different. So the same applies to the uh, earth. There are four major categories of the uh, burn religions. So the first uh, uh, and most ancient of them uh, is called in Tibetan Domi Burn. It translate, uh, translates as original, or uh, I translated it in this book as uh, uh, prehistoric, because um, it's uh, we, we don't know when it started. It's, it is so it is so old, and uh, uh, traces of this religion uh, or rather uh, spiritual traditions and various branches of the spiritual tradition. Um, found all over the all over the place in every way in Eurasia, not just in Tibet. Um, we, we, we find them in uh, <coughs> uh, Hindu, uh, Hinduism. We find them in uh, pre-Christian religions of uh, Europe, uh, Russia, Great Steppe, particularly Bomurgel, and uh, um, in Chinese uh, uh, pre-Taoist pre uh, traditions of the Wu shamans. And even in Taoism. So, um, this uh, kind of spiritual uh, background, spiritual cultural background, was used by the uh, Buddha of Hindrumbun uh, called uh, Tampa Shinra Mewo in Tibetan. But uh, he uh, actually appeared in Central Asia according to traditional um, Bombo um, reckoning, 16,017 BC. That's what this in, in text we have this day. Uh, so um, he used this culture. So he appeared in this culture, and he used this culture to transmit his uh, um, his message. Uh, so the uh, kind of Buddhism he taught uh, is uh, um, colored with this culture. So that's why there are, there might be uh, many external similarities to uh, some shamanic traditions, and so. One of the um, main points of, of this book, I try to very clearly to demonstrate the difference between shamanism, various kinds of shaman, uh, shamanic traditions, and Yun the uh, teaching of this uh, Central Asian book. So um, this is a uh, second kind of burn. Third kind of burn is called burn uh, uh, sarma, or uh, new burn. Um, it emerged in the 8th century when uh, born uh, undergone the severe persecution in the hands of the Buddhist administration of uh, King Trisan uh, who, who brought Indian, to be, uh, Indian Buddhism uh, from India, uh, invited Guru Bhagavan Sambhava, uh, Tantric master, and uh, um, monastic abbot uh, Shantarakshita. So, the uh, Buddhist party persecuted Bombos and almost destroyed this religion. Uh, it was saved uh, thanks to the three outstanding Bombo practitioners. Uh, um, one lived in the uh, uh, western area of Tibet, uh, which uh, at that time was actually um, called Shangzhong. Uh, it's different, uh, different country. <laughs> um, it, uh, it, at some point in history, it uh, occupied the, all of Tibetan plateau, and uh, Tibet uh, um, was uh, its vassal state until until the eighth century, when um, Tibet became stronger. Politically and militarily, uh, uh, Tibetan king uh, killed the uh, emperor of Shangshun and they took over all, all, all the territory. Um, so, uh, because um, Bombo religion was completely integrated into the triple uh, governing uh, model of uh, uh, Tibet and Shangshun, which is based on three principles uh, uh, earnest religion, Bombo priests, and the king. So, king had uh, one third of the power. And uh, he wanted absolute power, as they do. Um, so he used uh, uh, um, foreign uh, religious tradition to achieve his goal. Um, he was successful um, for some years, but then there were many uh, calamities in the land because uh, um, Indian Buddhists uh, lacked uh, particular rituals of uh, propitiation and uh, uh, pacification of various gods and spirits which controlled uh, natural um, um, landscape and uh, forces and uh, uh, elements, and um, particularly also because uh, the um, 
great Mahasida who lived in uh, Jiangsu. Uh, he was a um, uh, royal priest of King of Jiangsu. He was asked by the wife of, of killed emperor to uh, uh, pacify this uh, Tibetan king. So he used the uh, tantric magic to subdue him. Uh, and uh, as a uh, uh, condition for recalling it back, he uh, uh, demanded that uh, 360 types of turn which he was practicing would not be destroyed. So that's how uh, Pompo teaching survived in Western Tibet, which is now uh, called uh, uh, Ngari, uh, um, Western Tibet, uh, around Mount Tise, Kailash. So uh, Shanshun uh, uh, Kingdom was uh, um, centered around Mount Kailash. And uh, uh, another great uh, Bombo Mahasida, uh, uh he uh, also was uh, very much uh, responsible for hiding the texts uh, um, when persecution started. So they were rediscovered re 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 at the later date. And a uh, third very important person was called Chosa uh, Bomo, was her name, and she was a woman. She was an uh, outstanding practitioner of Hindrabun. Uh, um, she possessed um, great magical powers, and uh, um, finally, king came to her and asked her to invite the Bombo priest back, and that's how uh, Bon was saved from uh, complete destruction. And uh, he uh, uh, issued the edict, the Tibetan king uh, issued the edict of practicing uh, Yindran Bon and uh, Indian uh, Dharma together. So that created the base for the what is called now New Bon. Sarma. The texts were written which combined these two traditions, then they were hidden and they discovered in the 20th, uh, uh, 12th, uh, 12th uh, 14th centuries. And the uh, tradition spread now very much uh, uh, alive in the uh, Eastern Tibet, particularly uh, province of uh, Kham. Um, fourth category, uh, these three categories we find in the uh, um, traditional Tibetan texts. So I added the fourth category which I call mixed burn because there are also many traditions on, uh, um, in Tibetan borderlands uh, all over the Himalaya in uh, uh, Himachal Pradesh, uh, Nepal, and then if you go to uh, China in Yunnan, and also in Siberia around Lake Baikal, where uh, different kinds of burn, Yundu burn, prehistoric burn, uh, is mixed with, uh, um, mixed with each other and also with other traditions like uh, Shamanism, Buddhism, and uh, various other um, Tradition. So that is uh, the uh, brief uh, explanation about vastness of uh, uh, cultural and religious, uh, spiritual, let's say, phenomenon called Burn. Uh, now, um, Bomorgel uh, of, of Buryatia is the um, mixed Burn tradition, but it contains a lot of uh, um, elements from uh, prehistoric burn in particular. That's why it's very interesting for uh, for me in, in this research because in uh, in Tibet prehistoric burn traditions completely vanished almost. So there there left some uh, mediums which called Hlapa and Hlama in Tibet, but they are mostly connected to um, various Buddhist uh, schools. So their practice is not uh, not pure anymore. Um, so uh, campaign. Bon uh, with the information in the texts and also what is practiced by Tibetan Buddhists because um, Guru Padmasambhava and other masters uh, absorbed many, many methods uh, uh, of, from different kinds of burn into Tibetan Buddhism. That's why Tibetan Buddhism is so different from any, 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 others, uh, uh, any other versions of uh, Buddhism. So anything what is different about Tibetan Buddhism is, uh, is uh, coming from burn. And by um, by practicing all these three traditions, I gradually I, I start to see many many uh, parallels, um, and uh, um, um, its connection to the most uh, ancient levels also of uh, European culture. For example, um, there are some uh, rituals uh, we find in uh, Bomorgel, which address to the uh, god of the underworld called um, Erlik Han in Buryatia, uh, which almost 100% identical to the rituals described in the uh, ancient Greek uh, epic of uh, Argonautica, where uh, Jason is traveling to uh, Colchis, uh, which is, um, they say, modern-day Georgia, to recover golden fleece. So he meets a, a magician 
Medea, female uh, um, magician who uh, helps him in, in many ways. And uh, um, description of the rituals of offering to uh, goddess he Hecata, which is uh, connected with underworld, uh, almost 100% identical to the rituals uh, performed nowadays, uh, to such an extent that even uh, animals, which are, um, they, they both uh, in, involve animal sacrifices. Animals which are uh, used are the same. They use black sheep, they do it. and bomber girl. Um, so um, they, uh, they sacrifice black, black sheep's, uh, sheep in the, in the middle of the night. They use honey and all, all the small details are basically the, uh, the same. So um, that is kind of short uh, uh, introduction. Um, first chapter uh, here deals with the uh, history, uh, large chapter on history of uh, uh, Bern and Bomberdale, and is divided into uh, three parts. Um, Lands of Bo uh, Bern uh, and uh, uh, Lands of Bomberdale. First part is uh, Lands of Prehistoric Bern. Um, this is quite interesting also because um, where Prehistoric Bern was spread, we can also see uh, by uh, distribution of the ritual, uh, ritual objects such as uh, Namka. Uh, it's called in Tibetan Namka. Basically what it is, it is a, a, a thread cross <coughs> which used for the uh, offering rituals, uh, uh, ransom rituals. And we can find it in Tibet, we can find it in Java, we can find it in uh, uh, North and South Americas. I myself saw them in Mexico hanging in the uh, um, offices and the bookshops also. <laughs> Uh, uh, where they used for uh, fending off the, I asked them why, why are you having this here? So, oh yes, this is the, uh, this is the for deflection of the uh, bad spirits and, and negativities. So that gives us a clue of uh, antiquity of this uh, uh, old um, spiritual tradition, uh, because uh, as we know, there was migration from uh, Asia to Americas via Bering, uh, Bering Strait, uh, uh, which uh, there were several ways of, uh, uh, around 40,000, I think, uh, and then 14,000. And so um, different waves of people from Asia migrated to uh, uh, Americas, and uh, they brought with them these traditions. That's why there are some certain parallels between uh, Siberian shamanism, uh, Tibetan uh, uh, religions, uh, various kinds, and uh, uh, one more girl, and Native American tradition. So this is quite interesting. Um, the second part deals with the uh, lands of one more girl, and uh, we don't really have time to go into, into details here. But uh, I must say that uh, um, teachings of Tampa Shinrap, the Buddha of Bon, uh, appeared in Central Asia on Molong Ring. Uh, that was the land where he was born. Uh, that was the central part of the larger region called Tagzik. Uh, which uh, more or less located in uh, modern Central Asian uh, um, uh, land, uh, landmass uh, with the countries such as uh, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, uh, Turkmenistan, all these towns. Uh, and uh, probably uh, uh, with the center at that time in, uh, in Pamir, because in, in, in Yudhurban text uh, says that in order to reach uh, uh, that land, you have to walk towards north, uh, northwest from Mount Kailash, so it is pointing to, it's pointing exactly to Pamir. Uh, from there, the teaching spread to uh, India, uh, China, um, particularly um, to China, interested because people probably know Chinese uh, religion uh, uh, better, um, particularly uh, such books like I Ching. Um, according to uh, Indian Bon tradition, I Ching has origins in the, uh, in the teachings of Tampa Shinra, because uh, he had a, a student um, who was a, a Chinese king at the time, who uh, learned astrology and divination and brought these teachings uh, to China. Particularly the uh, um, teachings or, uh, uh, explaining the uh, um, Lord owners of the universe, so uh, powerful beings which can control uh, space, and space and time. And uh, uh, these are the uh, in Tibetan they called nine mela. If you know the, um, if you saw the uh, Kala Chakra uh, um, diagram, um, uh, um, so in the center there is um, 
uh, square with nine uh, with nine spaces. This is uh, this is gods called Mela. They are the most powerful gods of universe. And when when people are born uh, under uh, in time uh, of control of one of these Mela, so this influence uh, of, of this energy stays with them for life and affects their uh, um, their uh, their their fate. Then. Ah, no, I mean the dark. Amanda. There is one in the book, but it's very small. So <coughs> anyway, so uh, then everybody probably knows that um, if you know I Ching, uh, uh, eight trigrams from which uh, 64 hexagrams are formed. So eight trigrams in, t in Tibetan uh, are called Parkha uh, uh, <coughs> and in uh, Chinese called Pagwa. Um, and uh, in uh, Yandermon tradition, each of, his, of these trigram has the origin myth. Uh, origin myth is very particular uh, uh, feature of the uh, rituals in Yandrimbun. Before uh, you start any ritual, you have to relate the origin where the uh, um, these rituals, where and when these rituals started. So um, each of these parka um, have a, a myth of origin, which shows that they are um, original teachings coming to China. And and then there is also twelve year. Uh, Animal cycle, which is on outside uh, um, of this diagram, which is imprinted on the back of the turtle. Um, uh, turtle is the uh, uh, symbolizes owner of the whole of our universe. <clears throat> um, so I just wanted to highlight that uh, because uh, it's quite interesting, I think. <clears throat> then um, uh, another important country uh, was uh, Sumba, uh, which. Uh, Known by the Mongols as uh, Sumbe, uh, which, which had uh, many uh, skillful doctors. And uh, we have records in a uh, Bombonga text uh, when one of the Tibetan uh, kings got uh, blind, uh, they invited uh, skillful doctors from uh, this country. And uh, their treatment was so successful that uh, uh, he was able to see uh, very, very far. So they gave him a new name. His new name was uh, Tagri Nyanzi which means uh, uh, he who can see the antelopes on the faraway mountain from a royal palace. <laughs> mm. uh, and uh, also, uh, there are many important masters from this country uh, uh, which received teachings, uh, Bompo teachings in Shangshung and Tibet and brought them to Mongolia and uh, um, probably Boryatia um, during the various periods of time. Particularly, um, Yen Bon undergone two persecutions. One I, I already was uh, Talking uh, sp spoke about in the eighth century, but there was previous one in uh, during the reign of the eight king uh, uh, around 700 BC, or according to Nankanobu, uh, dating first century AD, where many Bombo priests uh, left uh, to Tibet uh, with um, different texts, uh, mostly uh, with uh, divination, astrology, um, magic, and, and tantra, and uh, it's said that they went into a great step. So that was the that was the um, uh, mode of distribution of uh, of uh, the teachings to Great Step and probably to. Um, the second part it. talks about uh, uh, lands of uh, uh, Boamorgel. Basically, uh, one of most important events. I will not uh, spend much time. Uh, most important event here is the migration of the uh, nomadic tribes. Uh, from uh, the south of the Gobi Desert. They crossed Gobi Desert and went to the region of Lake Baikal in the second millennium B uh, BC. Uh, later on, they be be became known as Hunu. Um, and uh, that is the original uh, Mongols. They were not called Mongols, but uh, in modern Mongolian language and uh, the name for a man, even now, is Hun. Hun. So uh, we have a uh, uh, evidence from Chinese uh, uh, records that these people practice the uh, um, uh, cult of the sky, which in modern Tibetan, uh, in, in modern Buretian, Bomorgel is called uh, Muhe Tengeri, Eternal Blue Sky. This is the uh, main and most fundamental uh, um, uh, cult of uh, this uh, spiritual tradition. Also, at that time, there was a uh, developed trade between uh, Baikal region and uh, uh, Shining state. Uh, from Baikal they were bringing uh, uh, jade mirrors and fur and uh, uh, from China they were bringing uh, various other uh, uh, seals and stuff like that. Um, so why is it important to know? Because 
um, the mirrors, particularly mirrors, are very important uh, uh, for uh, practice of uh, Buryatian law, and it shows how ancient this tradition is, because they are used for uh, divination, uh, uh, they are used for healing, uh, they are used for a variety of uh, uh, rituals. Also, uh, Buryatian Bomorgel has an important symbol, which is called Ha Stamga, uh, in, in translation it means jade stump. But what it is really, uh, it is a uh, um, swastika which ro rotates the um, bomb away. So <clears throat> that, that shows the uh, how ancient this, this tradition is. Um, then this chapter goes to the various uh, uh, pro proto-Mongol states uh, such as uh, Sombe, <coughs> etc. And uh, Mm, there is quite uh, a lot of information on the uh, Mongol Empire, uh, which was created by Chinggis Khan, of course, which is called Ik Mongol Us. Why is it important? Because uh, during that time, the Bomargela uh, undergone an important transformation and became a state religion of this empire. But uh, the structure uh, of uh, um, ar um, organizational structure of empire, and particularly of the army of Hun Hunnu from the second millennium BC up to the uh, Great Mongol uh, Empire is basically the same. Everything was divided into two wings, uh, um, right and left, uh, and connected with the orders of the sky gods, in, which propitiated uh, in Bomorgel. White Tengeri of the West and uh, uh, Black Tengeri of the East Order. Uh, and so, uh, <clears throat> when, for example, uh, any, anything is done, so the offerings that are done to, to these gods and the uh, um, protectors of the clans and various uh, ancestral deities. And uh, um, interestingly, possibly, uh, uh, military success of the Mongols in battle was uh, um, due to the fact that uh, the army probably was fighting in trance, because before the battles, uh, um, there is an important book on history, it's called uh, Sacred uh, uh, History of the uh, Mongols, Mongol Nun it, um We find the expo um, descriptions of how they prepare for battle. For example, the friend of Chinggis Khan, uh, called Jamuha, his blood, uh, blood brother, um, he says, um, I'm already um, uh, riding my black horse, I'm already holding my black tuk, tuk is the uh, uh, spear with the uh, black horse or yak tail, and I'm already beating my, my drum. This is, the, this is the ratio of in, invoking the black tangeri before the army goes to battle. So, this, uh, this is quite interesting. Okay. Right. Uh, second uh, second chapter is uh, uh, deals with the Lake Baikal itself. So um, I briefly say Lake Baikal is the um, um, most important spiritual and uh, geographical feature uh, in this region. And uh, it, uh, according to the legend of Bua uh, Morgel, it used to be a volcano. Um, heavenly smithy, controlled by the Tengiri, but um, it exploded and uh, left a massive crater, uh, crater which was filled with the waters of um, River Angara. And so uh, the uh, owner, uh, Tengiri owner of the, of the smithy, be became the god of Baikal. His name is Bahar Harahan. Um, basically, everything which is done in Buryatia revolves around Lake Baikal. So most important. Uh, Local deities reside on the island, uh, uh, Oihon um, Island, in the middle of Baikal, and uh, um, there are a series of taboos uh, um, which Boyas have to observe. For example, they're not allowed to throw rubbish uh, into the lake and these kind of things. Uh, uh, so um, it's a source of spiritual power, uh, and um, it's also um, the focal point of the uh, Mongols themselves, because origin of Mongols, uh, Mong Mongols are said to have originated in the land uh, Ergunul Kun, which is the, in the western part of uh, um, Lake Baikal, in the northeast of Lake Baikal, there is a region called Barguzin. So their uh, uh, ancestor of uh, Mongols uh, <coughs> uh, came from uh, uh, um, ginger, Ginger wolf, uh, uh, sorry, uh, blue blue wolf and ginger antelope. Uh, they're, they're uh, ancestors of uh, uh, Mongols. Right. Uh, 
The next chapter deals with the different uh, kinds of bone, which I already talked to, so we'll skip this. Um, chapter 4 uh, deals with cosmology. Mm, so, um, cosmology of bone and uh, bone marrow is quite similar. Uh, the world is divided into uh, three uh, main spheres uh, or worlds, uh, sky world, middle world, and underworld. Sky world uh, uh, inhabited by various gods. Middle world by uh, humans and uh, uh, various ancestral spirits and the lords of the land, and underworld is uh, inhabited by the um, water gods or spirits, and also in Bomargel uh, um, there is a kind of hell controlled by the um, uh, Erlikhan, uh, lord of hell. Um, the whole the three realms are held together by a cosmic mountain and a uh, um, cosmic tree, which uh, um, very similar. The difference is in the understanding how these worlds came about. While in Bo Morgel they said to have been uh, created by uh, eternal uh, blue sky, uh, uh, in uh, Yundumbelan uh, they have to be, uh, they, are, they are said to have manifested because of their uh, accumulated karma of uh, sentient beings. So um, they are not created by any creator god but uh, are a result of our own um, karma. So we appear uh, in this world, and uh, it, it kind of appears for us from our own mind, so to speak, or natural form. So that's the difference. Also, in the uh, Yandumban tradition, uh, there is division in uh, six realms or six uh, destinies of rebirth, where being, uh, uh, sentient beings uh, circulate. Uh, in, in Sanskrit, it's called samsara, you probably know the word, <clears throat> in Tibetan, Korva. So, uh, these worlds are the uh, world of the uh, long living gods. Um, jealous demigods, um, humans, uh, animals, uh, uh, hungry ghosts, and hells. And uh, uh, there is also seventh dimension, uh, which is the dimension of the bardo. Bardo is a, a um, state between uh, um, death and next rebirth, so uh, where the uh, re reincarnating consciousness is, is not uh, attached to any sort of uh, um, above. <clears throat> okay, uh, chapter 5 deals with the various uh, uh, gods, gods and spirits. Um, 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 so, in uh, Bom or Gel and uh, in uh, Tibet, Tibetan Bon, um, there are um, many, many different kinds of gods and spirits. In, uh, uh, in Bon, uh, we find the uh, main. main uh, um, Category contains 33, uh, 33 different uh, kinds of gods and spirits of the three worlds, and most uh, um, uh, condensed uh, version is uh, called eight classes. In uh, Bon traditions, they called actually eight classes of helpers, because depending on how we relate to them, they either uh, um, cause trouble or, or they can bring uh, uh, immense benefit. So there is a whole series of rituals uh, of propitiation of various gods of spirits, such as like uh, water gods, uh, uh, rock spirits, uh, uh, sky gods, etc., etc., uh, in order to placate them, uh, in order to avert the epidemics, uh, wars, uh, and uh, bring prosperity, well-being, and uh, uh, particularly also help in spiritual practice. For that purpose, uh, in Yindrimban, there is one particular class of, uh, of uh, uh, beings which are uh, called uh, 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 protectors uh, of the teachings. Um, uh, these are uh, have two uh, two kinds: the uh, uh, enlightened and uh, worldly uh, beings. Enlightened beings, uh, there are two main protectors, which are emanations of the Buddha, and uh, uh, worldly ones were converted by uh, the Buddha or the uh, powerful practitioners of Hindu Burn gave uh, vows to protect Hindu Burn and protect the practitioners uh, in, and uh, help to spread and maintain the teachings. So uh, this is quite important class. In, in Bonn there is one particular class uh, of uh, these gods, sky gods, uh, called Drabla. Um, they are uh, predating Buddha Tampashin Raps. They were ancestral gods of his clan. Uh, which is called Mushen. Uh, uh, Tampashin Rab descended, uh, Tampashin Rab's clan descended from the sky gods of uh, Muriel, 
And um, these gods, uh, for example, um, he invoked them when he was attacked by the um, sky demons called the uh, Dud, uh, with which uh, um, which are always in opposition uh, and uh, in conflict, eternal conflict with the uh, positive sky gods called Hla. Um, so um, these uh, these gods gave Tampashinra nine weapons of Drabla, which are uh, um, later on in this book and the chapter of. Uh, uh, sky call. I compare with the ritual uh, apparel of the uh, Buryatian shamans, and basically um, they they match almost 100%. Um, so there is a, a, a helmet, uh, which uh, um, cord helmet. Um, then there is a, um, chain mail. There is a, a shield, which. Uh, um, um, sometimes uh, uh, shamans use shield, sometimes they use a drum, but uh, 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 drum is also called shield. Mm. Um, mm, there is a spear and uh, various, uh, uh, various other um, weapons. They all, all nine matched uh, with this drama. So on, um, I cannot go into like the de de details of this research, but basically uh, orders of drama and orders of the white tengiri uh, sky gods of uh, Boreach and Bomber Girl are quite uh, quite uh, parallel and uh, they also find um, um, counterparts in uh, pantheon of the ancient proto indo uh, in the in, in ancient proto indo european uh, um, gods um, particularly um, the head of the white tengeri of uh, uh, pantheon of bomorgel and bomorgel is called uh, hormusta tengeri um, um, it, he is uh, one and the same as uh, Harmus Tiazata of uh, um, Prizorastrian uh, um, tradition, uh, who later on uh, became Ahura Mazda of uh, Zoroastrian religion. The, um, and uh, also, uh, we, we have a, a name of the white Tengeris uh, in Bolet and Bomorga, Western, and called Barunai, Barun. Um, it's not Boreatian word, it, uh, it has no Boreatian etymology. And uh, um, I did several of, uh, um, did quite a big research on this. So basically, it's connected to uh, Indo Iranian Varuna, or Proto Varuna, uh, um, uh, who is uh, worshipped by uh, Aryans of India and uh, uh, was worshipped uh, before uh, Zoroaster in. Uh, um, Iran. And uh, um, many, many functions of uh, these two gods are uh, parallel. Also, um, interestingly, that shows that the, but why the white Tengeri are connected in the West, that is an interesting question, because uh, normally white side would have been associated with the East where the sun um, rises, right? But uh, uh, in Mongol tradition, it's all other way around. So white Tengeri are allocated in the West. Um, uh, this uh, most likely connected with the fact that uh, Mongols, as the Aryans, uh, migrated uh, into the Great Steppe from the north after the um, 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 Ice uh, Age ended. Uh, there was massive migrations of people uh, southward. So, um, <clears throat> and uh, um, therefore, Varuna. Uh, Indoranian Varuna is connected with the action of the West. He is positioned in the West. Um, so that's why um, Mongolian uh, uh, White Tengeri are called Varunai. So this is, uh, this is quite interesting, I think, at least for me. Anyway. <coughs> Another uh, important god uh, which is um, identical with uh, Harmusta Tengeri is uh, Nipangse, uh, who is a protector of uh, uh, important uh, Dzogchen and Tantric cycles of uh, uh, Shun, uh of, of Indian uh, So um, there is a um, um, quite complex uh, re research published, uh, published here about that. <clears throat> right. So uh, now we come to the transmission and the initiation uh, um, in. Uh, Bolo Morgel tradition. So nowadays, uh, 
uh, shamanism, kind of uh, word shamanism and uh, word shaman, and uh, uh, quite popular. Many people are very much interested. And they're going for courses, uh, um, receiving certificates after <laughs> one week or two or three. And uh, very happy about that. But uh, that is that's not the case in Buretia. In Buretia, people are very much afraid of uh, um, so-called calling. It's it, it, it's called in Buretia ongoing. Uh, <clears throat> uh, it's a calling of the ongoing spirits, ongoing daralha, which is literally translated pressure of the spirits. So what is happening? Um, person who gets the calling to become shaman must have. Uh, shaman's lineage, uh, which is called Udha. Udha means a spark of fire. It comes from the time when the uh, teachings were first, uh, uh, teachings of Bill Morgel was first, first transmitted to humans from the uh, white sky gods. Uh, they sent the white eagle on, uh, to the earth and uh, um, he uh, ended in sexual union with the woman from a uh, Shosholok tribe and gave a birth to, to a son who, who was the first son. So from there on, the uh, lineages are, uh, are preserved until today. Uh, so, um, not any Buryat can become shaman. Uh, it's, it's not happening like that. And uh, the calling is extremely painful. It may come, for example, uh, in a dream. It may start in a dream or like in, in a waking state. Person will start hearing voices and uh, um, um, various. Uh, mm, Diseases appear so to such an extent that I I, I, I saw one time. Uh, so the person goes like purple, you know. They they have feet similar to um, epilepsy uh, and stuff like that. And um, many of them trying to buy way out from becoming a shaman. So there is a particular ritual which uh, can be performed. <clears throat> um, it's called uh, in uh, uh, body washing ritual. So uh, they gather the uh, water from uh, nine uh, holy springs uh, from Lake Baikal and other ones. Uh, they they hit it and uh, beat the person with the. Um, um, what's it, uh, birch branches. Huh? Yeah, birch branches. Yeah, room. birch branches. Uh, uh, so, uh, um, in 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 order to uh, purify this uh, um, uh, strong uh, strong affliction, and then they pray very strongly to Tengeri. So, please. Uh, please let this person live normal life. Um, those who are not lucky enough uh, to uh, avoid this office, uh, they undergo uh, years and years of, pain of painful transformation, um, where um, basically in their vision they're, they're being chopped uh, in, into pieces, boiled, uh, and the whole their body is replaced until uh, um, they obtain certain, certain powers. But that's not enough, because uh, then they have to have transmission of knowledge from a, uh, from a teacher, a uh, spiritual teacher, <clears throat> which is called Naija in, in, in Buryatian, and undergo a series of initiation. Uh, in uh, Buryatian Bomorgel, there is normally nine, nine levels of initiation, uh, which uh, um, transmit progressively higher knowledge and uh, um, magical powers, let's say. Um, and uh, in Mongolian uh, uh, system, there are 12. Uh, so, uh, Buryatian system based on the nine branches of the world tree. So, basically, each each time the uh, Boa or Otagon progresses further and further until they control anywhere in the universe and uh, uh, see, the, uh, see the things which they need, uh, um, have communication with the gods and spirits which needed for uh, helping the community. And uh, in uh, Mm, Mongolian branch uh, in initiation ri ri ritual is connected to the 12 branches of the heavenly deer, uh, which is a, a very uh, ancient uh, uh, Eurasian cult, actually. So there is a whole chapter on this, on the um, cult of the heavenly deer, um, which uh, we have also here in the UK. There is, for example, uh, there is a place in Oxfordshire called uh, Abbots Bromley. Uh, where they perform deer dance uh, every year. Uh, I think it is in, in, in June. And they have a, a ancient, I think seven or eight hundred years uh, old uh, uh, deer horns uh, from the type of deer which uh, well, ex ex extinct uh, in the UK now. So they, they stored in the church now, but obviously 
before it was, uh, um, it is pre-Christian tradition, most definitely. And the first one, uh, most important evidence of this is the uh, um, rock carving in a, a French uh, uh, cave uh, called Trois Faire. Uh, there is a carving of the, they, they, they call it the uh, magician, I think it's kind of internationally known. Uh, so that figure com combines uh, um, some, um, so it's uh, anthropomorphic, but it has uh, element, uh, uh, elements of uh, various uh, animals, like a deer, deer, uh, deer uh, horns, for example, paws of the bear, uh, some um, uh, bird elements, like maybe wings of the eagle, etc., etc. And all these elements uh, we find in the ritual uh, dress of Boyet and Beaumorgel now, because they have a, a metal uh, crown with the uh, Im imitation deer, deer horns, uh, then they have a, a special um, Cool. Like kind of cloak, which imitates the uh, wings of the eagle, etc., etc. And then uh, in Russia, uh, in Russian Ural Mountains, uh, they found um, bronze platelets with the uh, uh, in depictions of the uh, perm shamans uh, <coughs> of the perm culture. <coughs> they also have uh, exactly the same uh, ex same characteristics. So. It demonstrates the cult was spread all over the place, including Japan. For example, in Royal Egypt in Japan, they call Seme, uh, um, they uh, uh, make even special celebrations when somebody sold a white deer. Uh, uh, they immediately make a big, uh, big uh, festival. Uh, because uh, um, many of the um, gods of Shinto religion um, um, ride on the deer. And interestingly, also uh, in Borat and Bomargel, the, one of the epithets of the Tengeri sky gods is uh, uh, Haliutan. Haliun is the deer. Um, so, um, because the deer was the uh, probably first uh, animal domesticated by humans, um, then um, the gods were projected to uh, write something fast, the fastest, fastest mode of, of transport possible. Uh, um, and uh, um, deer is also connected with the sky cult everywhere. That is parallel. We we also can find many uh, deer stones in, uh, in uh, Great Steppe, particularly in uh, Mongolia, Altai, uh, um, in Hakashi, where I was uh, um, digging sky vents. We find them all all over the place. And uh, deer stones divided into three um, segments. Uh, in upper segments, we find a depiction of the sky gods. In the middle, there are um, deer, uh, stylized deer, uh, flying towards the sky. And the uh, lower level, uh, some um, depicts some warriors, uh, uh, various uh, <coughs> ritual implements, etc. So this is very, very ancient level uh, of uh, um, this uh, universal, uh, I could say, spiritual tradition, which transcends the um, nationalities and uh, local cultures. And uh, mm, we can find uh, parallels also, um, for example, in such texts like uh, um, Old Testament, uh, uh, Hebrew, Hebrew Bible, Tanakh, uh, when we talk about, uh, um, for example, rituals of uh, uh, sac uh, sacrificial uh, uh, rituals, blood, blood sacrifices, they are, they are totally parallel uh, in all of this uh, um, Different, uh, different traditions and explanations for the rationale for them is also parallel. Mm. Um, for example, um, uh, in various uh, folk tales, uh, Russian folk tales and myths of the uh, Siberian nations, which uh, seem to be they have no common language or anything, but uh, all the details are very much. Um, um, so th this points to the. <clears throat> Common uh, Q religion, which I, I, I basically I gave it a label in this book. I, I called it prehistoric burn of Eurasia for the not uh, 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 finding the better better uh, label because uh, uh, burn uh, is general name for for religion and uh, uh, it's not uh, uh, confined to any any particular um, religious tradition and uh, it was practiced all over the place, uh, in, in including British Isles. Uh, one thing I must uh, say, sorry, the, uh, 
chapters, next chapter is a sky, uh, sky cult, which we basically more or less covered. Then there is chapter on the heavenly deal, which also uh, we spoke about the purification rituals, uh, um, which uh, uh, find many parallels in both traditions. But what is most important, I think, to speak here is the um, concept of uh, soul in um, Bern and uh, and uh, Bormergel, <clears throat> because um, most of uh, healing and magic methods are um, based on the uh, precise understanding by the magician and control of uh, uh, his or her own uh, soul or as it's known in, in Tibetan La. Um, soul is actually not quite right translation for uh, La, what's called La in Tibetan, um, because um, in Yundran Burn um, and uh, prehistoric Burn is understood in two different ways. I'll explain very briefly now. Uh, so, um, in Yundran Burn we have a uh, several triads connected with this La. So first one is called La Yi Sem. Uh, La um, is uh, karmic traces of the individual which are accumulated during the uh, countless uh, re uh, reincarnations. Uh, Yi is the subtle window energy and uh, Sem is the mind. Uh, so in one of the Dzogchen um, uh, cycles uh, they give a, a, a nice uh, metaphor for it. So um, they say mind, uh, which is symbolized by the uh, mm, uh, legless man, is riding the uh, horse of a uh, uh, blind horse of subtle wind, uh, which is uh, feeding on the uh, grass of uh, karmic traces. So these three things are working together. So that is one trend. Second one is la uh, tse sok. La is again karmic traces. Se is the um, vitality, uh, um, um, power of life, and uh, <coughs> um, soak is the um, duration of uh, um, this uh, life power. So basically, um, if uh, um, length of life, prosperity, uh, uh, happiness, and all these kind of things over every individual depends on the accumulation of the karmic traces, which is love, which determine how strong the life force is and uh, uh, how long it uh, lasts. So if you imagine the uh, life force as the um, column, so the, uh, the soak, uh, this third component, is the uh, height, height of this uh, uh, life force, so how long we're going to live. So this is uh, uh, two, two, two important uh, um, triads in uh, Yudrimbang. In prehistoric one, in 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 prehistoric one, there is another one which is uh, la, wuk, and so la. Um, in in this case, uh, understood more like um, uh, in uh, Bomorgel and other shamanic traditions, understand is actual uh, like soul, and wuk is the uh, breathing, uh, which brings the life force, and so is the duration of the breathing. So for as long as you breathe. Uh, we are alive. That's quite, uh, quite interesting. I think. So all the all the magical methods of uh, prognostication, uh, mm, <clears throat> healing, uh, magic, uh, both white and black, uh, depend on uh, mm, perfect knowledge of these uh, um, the three aspects of uh, um, soul. Yeah. Uh, you were talking about the um, between Tibet and South America. There's they often use the same same uh, stones. They use the the water stone and they use the uh, oh my god. They use the same stones for the same meanings. But also some guy he went to Tibet and he discovered in caves that they had taken the skin off someone and they had skins there that they wore another person's skin. And they have the same thing in Peru, mm. exactly the same. And that was before the Buddhism. This was the prehistoric. Uh, I don't know about stones. About the skin, um, I don't think it's the same because uh, what he probably saw was the human skins they used in uh, in, in, in Tibetan tantra. But uh, it's done uh, in uh, um, very particular ri 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 rituals for uh, warding of uh, negativity. Uh, so the uh, it's not it cannot be the 
the parallel uh, concept. I think. Well, I was thinking that maybe that had something to do with the Nagas serpents lose their skin. Or no, no, no. Nagas. Or do the Nagas don't come into it? No, Nagas don't come. Nagas uh, actually um, do not accept any offerings of meat, alcohol, blood, or anything. So there. When you do offerings to the Nagas, you have to be very careful what sort of incense you offer and uh, check very carefully whether there are any uh, animal ingredients in there. Uh, because uh, if there are, this will uh, upset them and instead of helping you, um, they will send the curse. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if your book establishes whether shamanism uh, originates in Ural Altaic people, or in Finno Ugric, or is it a syncretic uh, religion between the two? Because the Buryat that you mentioned are Mongolic people, therefore they are Altaic and they speak a Turkic language. Mm -hmm. uh, but we have shamanism in Finno Ugric people. For example, the Hungarians okay. uh, come from that area. And uh, they brought over uh, shamanism to Transylvania and to Hungary. And some of the words from uh, Tengrism, or from the religion of Tengri, mm -hmm. have actually been adopted into the Christian religion. Mm -hmm. For example, the Hungarian word for God is Ishten, mm -hmm. which means Father of Sky. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yash and Ten, mm -hmm. which you mentioned, Tengri is a religion of the sky. Mm -hmm. Also, they've kept the word for devil, which you mentioned in Buryat being uh, Ernik Han. Mm -hmm. In uh, Hungarian is Erdög, mm -hmm. and uh, in Mongolian is Urduk. Mm -hmm. And uh, we can find it even in Sumerian. <clears throat> Uh, there is a professor at uh, Nebraska University called Peter Revesh, who has uh, found a lot of cognates, a lot of vocabulary similar mm -hmm. or almost identical between uh, Hungarian and Sumerian. Yeah, that is. Uh... And you mentioned earlier that uh, there are elements from shamanism which have entered. Uh, uh, Greek mythology, like the Argonauts, mm -hmm. and Peter Lever says that's because the finno ugric people, when they migrated towards Sumer, a branch of them crossed into um, uh, in the island of Crete, and Minoan <laughs> a religion was then in. Uh, adopted by the mainland Greeks? Yes, uh, it's a good question. Basically, um, it, 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 it goes back to the Hunu. Um, because uh, Hunu were defeated in the Great Steppe. They migrated towards the west. And uh, um, particularly one uh, branch of uh, Hunu, which, called, which was called Hunugur, ended up in Hungary. And uh, they brought with themselves this uh, uh, Tengerism. Uh, not on, not only in Hungary. Yeah, For example, you Han, can find the Hans with the uh, at, Yes, uh, Hans has a slightly different nationality. Is Hunu who mixed with the local people and uh, Volga River. Uh, so basically, you can find a stel, uh, stone stele in Bulgaria, for example, where uh, dedicated to Tanra, which is Tengeri. And uh, um, people of the steppe used to uh, use uh, uh, runes for um, writing. Actually, m most people think the runes are of Scandinavian origin, which is not the case. Uh, they, exactly. they, they are found in the Great Step. Yeah. And uh, that's how it is connected, uh, of course, uh, uh, to the people uh, shamanism now in Finland, etc. I don't actually like the word shamanism, uh, but um, because originally it was restricted, uh, uh, it was invented uh, by, by Russian scholars of uh, St. Petersburg uh, Academy of Science in the 19th um, end of 19th, beginning of 20th century, that referred only to the uh, Siberian native traditions, not just Mon uh, Mongolic, but also uh, uh, Turkic, uh, all these tribes which live there. Uh, <clears throat> but then, when Mircea El Eliade wrote his book and uh, banged everything together and called it shamanism, whether the, whether, um, the patterns of this 
uh, native traditions from all over the world had anything in common, whether they used position techniques or not, everything is now labeled shamanism. So, um, yeah, we have to say it now, but it's not a, not, not a proper, proper term. And the so, name shaman is actually coming from Tungus word. Um, and uh, uh, is a uh, uh, priest of uh, Ninets uh, uh, tribe is called Sambana. Sambana, and that is the that is the that is the uh, origin of the word shaman and shamanism. But the shamans, original shamans, are only uh, worshiping to the lower realm. So basically, in terms of uh, Buryat and Bomber girl, they are uh, um, they can be called uh, black boar, black shamans. So they're um, not even kind of black shamans which deals with the black uh, uh, sky gods, but mostly dealing with the uh, spirits of the underworld. Thank you very much. Next question. Yeah, but I mean, shaman, that more, nowadays more and more shamanism is associated with healing, like shamanic healers. What's your view on this? Your type of gen you are of sh I mean, are you involved in any healing circles yourself? I used to be involved, but not anymore. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, yes, we did uh, some healing with shamans in uh, in Boretia, Carol and me. Uh, so they they use uh, <clears throat> uh, healing with the mirror, for example. So um, spell is recited, it's put on the heart, and then um, <coughs> after I don't know, some ten minutes, so, uh, yeah, take it out, and uh, it's like a X-ray. You can see on the mirror. It's, it's not a vision, actually. It's like imprint. It's, like it's like an etching in a mirror, which shows what uh, which problem um, problem is which organ in your body you have. For example, they do this. But uh, um, yes. or it might show a spirit that's causing trouble yeah. as well. <coughs> um, at the moment, I'm not involved because I'm mostly involved in the uh, practice of kindred band tradition. Yeah, I do some more girl uh, offerings to the kindred bands. I have to, but I don't do. I used to be involved. Is that a silverback mirror, or is that? Sorry? Original mirrors were jade, as I said, from jade, and oh. uh, now mostly uh, old mirrors we see are they are brass, brass mirrors. Yeah, so they are <laughs> they are polished, and uh, and uh, Tibetans use the uh, uh, very similar uh, Tibetan bombers use very similar techniques. Also, they um, mirrors used for divination, so um, they recite a special invocation to the deity. They uh, throw uh, grains on the mirror. And then the visions appear, and then uh, there are two different uh, ways. They either in interpret the vision directly, or there is a manual uh, which uh, mm, describes uh, uh, what visions may mean. But the most complicated divination technique uh, of Pune is called uh, Jutik. Uh, it's coming from Shangshun, and uh, it um, it's basically uh, divination using the uh, threads and knots. And uh, there are about 360 kinds of nodes and 10,000, uh, so it's much more complicated uh, uh, complex than I Ching. And interestingly also, um, I think it's connected with the very, very ancient culture. Uh, it's also connected to America and it's connected to uh, Chinese culture. Because uh, when we read Tao Te Ching, uh, Lao Tse says uh, people should go back, uh, uh, forget about writing, and should go back by tying nodes on, on the rocks. And then we have Kipu in, uh, in, in Peru, right? Yeah, so they still tie notes. That is, uh, pre, uh, that is something like uh, before 7000 BC, I think, culture, which used the um, threads and, and, uh, to tie notes and to uh, uh, <clears throat> use for information, divination, and various kind of. Uh, and, the, and they use uh, a mirror <laughs> is from the volcanic, volcanic glass. Well, uh, I don't think it's important what the mirror is for. What is important is. Uh, Reflective capacity. Yeah. Because mirror symbolizes the mind, or it symbolizes the universe. I mean, de depending on the, uh, who is practitioner, what uh, um, <clears throat> what tradition they uh, they, are, they are practicing, so there are different uh, understanding of the origin of the visions. But it's, uh, it symbolizes other space, the sky, or the mind. You know, you had this thing from the east and from the west for the two different factions. Yes. Do you think it's possible, because you know the world turns over every so often, that the 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 west one was from before Flipping the world turned? Yeah. I don't know. I think it's more connected with migration of the people, because in uh, in Vedas it said uh, that um, um, I 
here I also talk about the research by Bao Ganga Hartila, who um, basically posited that the original uh, land of the uh, proto indo Iranians, uh, proto indo Europeans, etc., was uh, in the circumpolar regions of, uh, of the globe because of the positions of the constellations, how they described in the Vedas, and uh, uh, rituals, uh, early Vedic rituals. So here it says that uh, in, uh, in this ancestral land, they uh, uh, lived five different races of people, Panchajana, so not just Aryans. Therefore, it's possible that the ancestors of most uh, five races on this planet actually uh, lived together in close proximity in some ancient time. Um, so something you may be in a good position to answer, actually. It's often been said that wherever Buddhism has spread, it tends to mix very well with local pagan tradition. Mm -hmm. I wonder whether you had any insights on why that should be. Uh, yes, because uh, people cannot relate to the... That's the reason also why Tampashin Rav or Buddha Shakyamuni, for that matter, used the... Buddha Shakyamuni used the uh, um, Vedic culture. Uh, and Tampashin Rav used the culture of historic one from Central Asia, and that's why they're different. But the, the uh, different form, but the meaning is uh, can be transmitted to people using something they already know. Because if we start talking about something which they have absolutely no clue about, uh, it's impossible to uh, explain anything. That's why I think it is the reason. And uh, um, yeah, uh, the most... Uh, um, interesting place for uh, to illustrate this point is the uh, modern day Nepal. You know, in Nepal we, uh, there is incredible <coughs> religious tolerance, and uh, uh, we can see uh, uh, how, for example, there are some strange things happening. For example, there is a uh, one um, celebration of uh, a bodhisattva um, to whom uh, they, they, they they dedicate big uh, built chariot and they drag through the uh, streets of Kathmandu, but, uh, which is presided over by the Buddhist uh, priests. But during that ritual, uh, they also perform animal sacrifices, which are against the, should be against the uh, Buddhist tradition, but they do, even now. Okay, thanks very much.